Good morning and welcome to our homestead. As I promised in a previous video, we are going to load test this 12,000 XP inverter by EG4. This is an off-grid all-in-one system that can output 12,000 watts. And in my opinion, this is the perfect day to do it. It's cold outside and it's rainy and cloudy. So we are gonna be pushing all the systems in the house up to their max. I'm excited to do this one. Let's get going. First thing I'm gonna do is take you around my house and show you all of the electric appliances that I have that we are gonna use and turn on for this test, including things like this chest freezer, which I'm gonna leave open so that the compressor will kick on. And then I'm gonna add things in like this 14 amp circular saw so that we can get an idea of how much that we can do around our home with just this one inverter. My electrical loads panel is balanced pretty good, but I'm gonna try my best to see if I can get one leg higher than the other. Now remember, with this type of inverter, this high frequency inverter, you will only get 6,000 on each leg. And for reference, this 12,000 XP can surge up to 18,000 watts for five seconds or 15,000 watts for 10 seconds. So that's helpful when you have a big surge from something like a well pump when it kicks in. Item number one is this old school water heater. This is probably 15 years old and it still runs really well and it surges to about 4,500 watts. We also have this old school upright chest freezer, which is not very efficient at all, and I'm gonna leave the door open on it so the compressor will kick on. And then we've got our washer and dryer. The dryer will use about 5,000 watts when the heating element is on, and it's not on constantly, but that does kick up 5,000 watts, and when I turn the washer on, of course, that kicks on the water heater. We have a 13 year old refrigerator here. It doesn't use that much, but I'm gonna, again, leave the door open so it kicks on the compressor. I'll kick on the microwave, which is 1800 watts, this 1100 watt tea kettle, and this 1800 watt air fryer toaster oven. And then I'll turn on all of the mini splits that I have around the house, which I've turned off for the beginning of this test. This one is a 9000 BTU Innovair. And then I also have three other units around the house. One 12,000 BTU Mr. Cool unit, and two more 9,000 BTU Mr. Cool units. And then if there is a big imbalance, I'm gonna add in the ubiquitous heat gun to try and drive up one leg or the other leg or try and surge it over its capacity. And this is a great test for the inverter because the mini split heat function, which will be on today, is a better test than the air conditioning. The heating draws more than the cooling. Let me show you what our baseline is and then we'll start turning things on. So to get our baseline, we are looking at our Emporia View app. If you haven't seen our video on that, go click on the video link at the top of the screen. But this really helps us to understand what we are using minute by minute, second by second, hour by hour, and day by day. It breaks down everything for you. I highly recommend getting one of these. So I have all of our circuits listed out here and it tells me how much each circuit is using and gives me a total here at the bottom, we're currently using in the house only 670 watts. That's from all the phantom loads, the lights, things like that. I did forget to mention that also included in that baseline is my seed starting station. So that number, that 670 watts that the house is running right now, normally would be lower. Now that we've established that, let's start flipping things on and see how this inverter handles it. You can see the screen here on the inverter is showing that we're drawing about 2300 watts right now from both legs. If you come into the settings here, you can see the draw on each leg, about 1150 on one and 750 on the other. You can also read that on your monitoring app down here at the bottom, although the app itself does refresh kind of slow, so it's not gonna be accurate up to the second like it is if you look on the screen. Let's kick on the little loads in the kitchen first before I turn on the big ones like the dryer and the water heater. On goes the teapot and the toaster oven. This has been hanging open, so it's probably kicked on by now. And I can hear this one has kicked on. And we've kicked up to 4,200 watts. And something must have ramped down a little bit, probably a mini split. Let's run this a different way. We've got all of the mini splits on. You can see we're drawing about 2,700 watts in the house. Let's turn off all of our kitchen equipment and kick on our dryer. You heard the fan kick on really high. You can hear it in the background. And we're at about 8,500 watts. I'm gonna run our power saw right now. 
You can see the inverter kicked up to about 11,000. Let's turn some of that kitchen equipment back on and then run the saw one more time. You can see we're almost at 12,000. This is the full capacity of the inverter. I currently have the toaster oven on, the tea kettle, all of the mini splits, all of the phantom loads, and our dryer. You can see we just went over 12,000 with no problem. Now I'm going to hit the skill saw again and see what happens. We ramped back down to 11,500 watts. When I hit this, I'm only surging to about 12,500. That's because everything in the house is fluctuating right now. I'm really trying to push this over the edge, but this is a real world test and trying to have everything in the house stay on is a challenge. I don't have like five random space heaters that I can just flip on and off to try and get it to overload. I've seen those tests before and they are cool, but I don't think they're real world applications, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing. And even mine is skewed a little bit because right now I'm gonna go turn on the heat gun in another part of the house so I'm drawing from a different circuit to try and keep the legs balanced. Okay, right now we've got a heat gun going. We've got the toaster oven. We have our dryer, all of our mini splits. Let's go try the microwave and see if I can overload this, but probably not. This is proving to be quite challenging. Everything is on right now. Okay, you can see in a real world application, this is really difficult to do to get it to trip unless you got multiple just massive loads on at the same time. So the thing that I'm gonna do is turn on the washing machine, which will kick on the water heater. I'm gonna have the dryer on at the same time and we'll see what this thing can do. But that just goes to show you that everyday usage in your house with whatever you're doing, unless you're doing two very large loads at the same time, this inverter will handle it. You're gonna be able to do almost anything you want. Okay, here we go. We've got our water heater on. All of our mini splits are on. We've got a lot of other things on. We're showing about 6,200 watts. Dryer's kicked on. We've ramped up to 11,800. You can see when you're at a higher load here, this starts to turn yellow to kind of warn you things are at their max. All right, let's hit the saw and see what happens. That was a great test. We hit 13.4 or 13.5, it ramped down to 12.8 and then held it there for at least five seconds. I don't have this on automatic restart because I usually like to see what the issue is if this does overload. So let me manually restart this and then I'll give you my final thoughts on this and wrap everything up. So the 12,000 XP did a good job but it didn't quite hit the listed surge capacities that are in the information sheet. So while it was over capacity and I could not get it up to the 15,000 watts that it should be able to surge to for 10 seconds, it did shut off at 12,008 after running for about six or seven seconds. So I'm not sure where the discrepancy is there, if it's anything over 12,000 up to 15,000 goes for 10 seconds and then up to that 18,000 watt mark for five seconds. But in general, overall, this does a great job and handles everything that I need it to handle here in our home. If you haven't seen the installation video for the 12,000 XP, please click on the link at the top of the screen so that you can see how easy this is to install. And also, if you need a smaller stackable unit, the 6,000 XP is a great alternative. And if you haven't seen our video on that one, click the link at the top of the screen. If you have any questions for us, please leave them in the comment section below. Now go click on this video right here, which talks about the EG4 wall mount batteries compared with the server rack batteries. Have a beautiful blessed day. See you next time.